Well, it looks like I've got a little helper this morning. Yeah. A lot of my videos are inspired by a comment somebody leaves. And well, this particular video it was inspired by somebody who commented about uh, the way I um, reverse a bowl and I use a friction drive. And the question was, why don't you just, you know, jam that up against your, your chuck jaws and do it that way? Well, I think that's a great question. And there are times when I do that, but I want to cover in this video the reasons why I do use a, a friction drive. And there's a place here in town that we go to, all the, the wood turners. They've got some nice exotic wood and different uh, sheet goods and that sort of thing. And what I usually use, this is a piece of poplar, and I just buy this only for this purpose. I've got some pieces that are 12 inches um, across, and I, I can make really large friction drives out of them, okay? I've just done this for 20 years, and we do now what we did 10, 20 years ago, okay? And sometimes we don't change. Well, I'm guilty of that. But let me, let me show you some of my friction drives that I have here. And I'm going to go over on a lathe and actually show you my process a little bit more in detail. I do this in lots and lots of videos and I get questions, you know, why don't you use a vacuum chuck? Well, I, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want another gadget in my shop. Okay. Which, which is fine. Um, but it's just one more thing to kind of keep track of. And, uh, let me, let me bring you in a little closer and I'll show you some of my my friction drives. All right, now, so much of what we do depends on how we safely attach something to the lathe and drive it and are able to uh, put a tool to it and do it safely. Here's a big bowl that's been sitting there. Looks like I cored out the center of that. But I need a friction drive that'll handle this bowl as well as this bowl, okay? And because I've been doing this for so long, I've got lots of friction drives sitting there that are going to fit. Now this is a this is a pretty good example, okay? When when I uh, drive a bowl with a friction drive, I want that to contact uh, right around this area. And if I only use chuck jaws that may be sitting on the, the inside of my, my bowl, that bowl is more likely to flex a little bit or vibrate. I want that contact to, make, to be made way out here, okay? So what I'm showing you here is a larger friction drive. And a lot of the friction drives that I'll show you started out this big, and uh, this looks like I did a, a jam chuck uh, on the inside right here. This one I have a faceplate on, and that brings me to another topic. Um, here's one with um, a tenon on the back of it for some particular uh, chuck. Here's one that has a screw in it. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got just a screw hole in there. It's a smaller one. And that might work on a bowl like this. And that's almost, that's almost perfect. So um, that kind of proves my point. I can just come over here and if I'm working on this bowl, I can find a friction drive that fits it. And I can very easily put that back in here. Let me find another, another example. This is, um, looks like ash. Uh, anyway, so this is a rough turned bowl. Okay, it's ready to go. The, the tenon is oval and the whole thing has gone a little wacky. And so it's well dried out. So I'll use a friction drive on this to retrue the tenon, uh, work on the back of that bowl, 
And then eventually, I'll reverse it again, I'll work on the inside. I will use the same friction drive uh, that I did to start this bowl when I finish it. Okay, and when I finish a bowl, here's one. Here's one a little closer to being completed. A little maple bowl looks like. The inside looks like it's been sanded. Well, I don't want to put this up against chuck jaws and mar that, that surface. And a lot of times uh, I will have the in, inside of my bowl completed. I'll have it um, sanded. I'll have a finish applied to it. And I want to protect that. So I find a friction drive and I put uh, shelf liner or paper towel in there so I can protect my bowl. <clears throat> now let me let me uh, comment. Let me make one more comment here. Uh, here's a friction drive that has threads on the inside. Okay, I finally bought a tap, and my friend Bruce uh, does this a lot. Um, this simply threads onto your spindle, and I can I can drive a bowl with this. Okay, now this. This has uh, pretty much square sides on it, so I would round that over and uh, maybe we'll take this bowl over and do a little work on it. Yeah. What else we have? Another, another way to do this. Uh, well, here's another small one with a faceplate on it and uh, I've got a lot of face plates. I do use face plates, and there's a piece of paper towel that must have been used on that. Um, here is one that's got a nut embedded in it, and that goes uh, possibly on the live center, but also on this side it says Vic, and that's for my large Vic mark chuck, and I can do an expansion recess on on this uh, friction drive. Anyway, lots of different ways to check up the, the friction drives and complete a bowl. Uh, here's another one. I'll drop this on my dog's head. All right. Um, here's another one that really looks like I haven't even used it. And I know what I, yeah. So it's got another faceplate on it and that's all ready to go. Eventually, when a friction drive starts out this big, it may end up this big after I've used it for a number of years. And I've got them all over the place. So let's go find a lathe and oh, go, go move. Hey, go, go, move. My dog is going deaf. That's a sad thing. So let me find a uh, a friction drive and we'll do a little work on this bowl. All right now sometimes we all have our own terminology and for me a friction drive uses the tailstock, the tail center as support. If we have a jam chuck, well I believe you don't have the tailstock support. That piece is jammed on and that's all it holds, that particular piece of wood. All right, now, I've got this block of wood threaded, okay? It takes a, a tap, and uh, if I can find that, I'll show it to you. I'm gonna... All right, now I wanna give you a close-up of this particular method of chucking up a drive block. This is a Beale tap. And a lot of you, I'm sure, are familiar with Beal. They make some really nice products. And here's the container. Um, it's under lathe spindle tap. Okay, and it's just made for this purpose, or used for this purpose. I've got a little, little block of wood that I've tapped. And if you've ever tapped, you'll know that it's pretty easy and uh, if you've never tapped, I should say, um, not that hard to learn. Okay, and that just uh, threads in there. Okay. And 
The threads, obviously, thread right onto your spindle on your lathe, and you can get one with one inch, or this one is inch and a quarter, and you first drill out with the appropriate size drill bit. Simple as that. Okay? And all the dimensions for drill bits and the tap sizes are on this container, but I'm sure if you go to the Beal website, you'll find all that information. Newark, Ohio. Okay. Trying to find a website on this little container, but anyway, if I remember, I'll put one in the description. This is just another method of chucking up a dry block on your lathe. A very simple method. It works very well. Turn my, my lathe on slowly. Let the lathe do the work here. This isn't terribly dangerous, I don't believe. Lock that in. And I can sort of feel where this is contacting, right back up into here. So the first thing I'm going to do, find a gouge and uh, take a little bit of this wood off right here. Okay, now as I try to fit this uh, bowl onto this jam, as I try to fit this bowl onto this friction drive, keep in mind that my bowl is oval and it's not going to fit perfectly. I'm still a little bit big on this. And I think that's about as good as we're going to get it. Alright, and I am going to be wearing my face shield. Finishing a rough turn bowl is a little bit like riding a buck and bronco, so let's uh, saddle up. I'm really tempted to leave that in real time. That's how long that took me to true up the outside of this, uh, this bowl. This is ash. And at this point, I don't do any sanding on this. Okay, I'll reverse this once again at the end and use the same dry block and I'll finish the outside. I have a little bit of uh, fine tuning on the tenon here. Find, find a tool that I can use here. All right. All right, that's all, that's all she wrote. So we're ready to find a chuck 
and I'll do the inside. I've got my Vic Mark 120 threaded onto my spindle, and I'm going to set this drive block aside so I can find it. You'll see that later on. And here's my bowl. Now the outside's pretty rough. I can do a little bit more shaping on that. I'll do some sanding later on. Right there. All right, now I am going to probably speed up this footage. The focus of this video is not to show you how I turn a bowl. I got plenty of videos doing that, but it's uh, more uh, the friction drive and reversing it. And anyway, let's uh, move on here. And the nice thing is, uh, after I do this video, I'll have another bowl completed. Let me give you an idea of what my speed is here on my lathe. Let's uh, crank her up to, uh, I think that's right at a thousand RPM. All right, now that trued up the surface pretty well, but my wall thickness is still a little bit uh, large on this bowl. Now I'm going to take a, a scraper and clean this entire area up. And I pretty much always go to a scraper to do that. Alright, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I had to do a little bit of scorching on this bowl. Now I'll probably take a little wire brush or something, uh, maybe a nylon bristle brush and clean that surface up a little bit and apply some uh, some clear finish on that okay i've got my bowl scorched and i've got one coat of uh, krylon matte finish this is one of my favorite finishes, it uh, really doesn't leave any sort of trace of a gloss or even a finish on there. So I, I've sprayed a little bit on there just to seal that. I've uh, sanded that and tried to get some of the soot off there. And off the lathe later on, I'll do some more finishing on the inside of my bowl. Time to reverse it. And I need to take off my, my chuck. I like to close the chuck jaws, okay, so there's no chance of getting a finger caught inside there. Alright, so I'll put my, my drive block back on here. Now just if you're curious, I do not intend to scorch the outside of my bowl. Alright, let's just see what we got here. I 
I need to do just a little fine tuning on this. What happens is um, the inside of your bowl gets a little bit larger in diameter. So it doesn't quite fit the uh, drive. All right, now I tested the, uh, the thickness on the bottom here, and I can take this tenon off completely or maybe make a, just a little uh, shallow foot out of it. All right, now what I like to do at this point is take time and um, do a little bit of uh, finished turning on this if I want to and then I'll sand it and finish it in this position. This gives me another opportunity to make any uh, profile changes if I want. a little bit of uh, scraping with my negative rake scraper. I'm going to sand this and put some finish on it and then I'll show it to you. Okay now in my process of reverse chucking and finishing a bowl I like to leave it here in this position maybe for a couple days and I come back and I put another coat of finish on it this particular little bowl probably has six or seven coats of an oil and I'm applying one of my wax mixtures to my little bowl. I'm going to do a little buffing on the outside. Okay, now <laughs> I got back together with John Cahall and emailed back and forth and just asked him a few more questions. Well, he uses a vacuum chuck. Well, yeah, and that really uh, probably saves a step and is, is a little simpler than what I do. I am no production turner, as you can tell. I'm not cranking out 20 bowls a day. Eh, don't want to. So here's the inside of my bowl, and I need to do a little bit more work on that. Uh, I get a little bit more of a shiny surface on that, and uh, it'll, it'll be really nice. Anyway, there's the outside. I'm going to leave this little nib on here until I'm completely finished with the outside. <sighs> anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. And stay tuned for the next four-way video 
with Mike Peace and Thomas Love and Richard Raffin uh, coming out April 1st. All right, thank you very much. I'll talk to you next time.